What's going on guys, Dan from SSG bringing you some Edison format gameplay. This is actually a finals match from one of our locals. And we have my brother Tim V from SSG of course on the left piloting Twilight and good friend Max playing Blackwings on the right. Both these players are 3-0 in this event. And uh, a quick shout out to Max as well. He does some pretty cool stuff on, on Instagram, YouTube, various different things. He does mixed drinks, he plays video games. Um, check him out at the Tropical Raven. All of his links will be in the description below. Um, we have a pretty interesting matchup here. I think Twilight, um, one of these like mid-range decks that can go over the top of decks in the late game with cards like Dark Arm Dragon and Chaos Sorcerer, and the steady and consistent Blackwings from Max on the right. Um, Max is actually playing the Vayu Turbo Blackwing Hybrid with the three Arc Refers, um, but he doesn't get a super good start on turn one, just setting three back rows, playing a little bit more of a controlling game. So let's see how the Twilight deck deals with this sort of defensive setup. Tim starts off by discarding a wolf to solar recharge, so getting that dead wolf out of the hand and getting his engine going here, milling over a Caius and a Book of Moon. So we're going to see what's happening in the first uh, turns here, both players trying to develop and Tim looks like he's gotten off to a good start. Also following up with an upstart goblin, so this is kind of like a good start for the twilight deck here as he's just sifting through his deck, finding his power cards and setting up his plays. And um, Upstart adds a lot of velocity to the Twilight deck, um, much needed velocity, because the Twilight deck can be a little bit slow, um, and just having access to Solar Recharge and Allure um, doesn't necessarily get you through your deck super fast unless you start chaining them together, but Upstart adds some uh, power here. Tim's actually going to start with a Spirit Reaper into these three back rows. I think he's just trying to bait out the back rows, see what Max is working with on the other side. And he swings with attack, and it looks like it actually hits for 300, which is pretty interesting. It tells um, Tim that he, Max doesn't have Deep Prison, Mirror Force, um, but the damage goes through and hits a barrel from a different dimension, which is one of the cards you expect Max to have in the spot, just being a little bit clunky in the hand. Not exactly um, the best um, opening turn uh, draw when you don't uh, have like Bayou and things like that. Tim sets a back row and passes his turn over to Max. And let's see what Max is working with now. He has to answer this Reaper in some way, or Tim can just run away with the game. The Reaper discarding two cards is kind of just lethal in Edison format. And uh, we have a Gale on the other side from Max, using his normal summon to do so, and activates the effect targeting the Spirit Reaper, automatically killing it. So, pretty decent answer. Um, kind of answers the Reaper as a plus one. And then trades off with a deep prison, attacking into deep prison. That's honestly not a bad trade for Max. Like he got a plus one versus the Reaper. The Reaper got a plus one versus him. So kind of an even exchange there. And then Tim trades off the deep prison for the Gale. Um, and then it looks like Max is gonna follow that up with a reinforcement of the Army, grabbing Dark Refer, which is one of the most powerful cards in Edison format, um, especially in this Blackwing hybrid build. Just gives the deck a lot of power, a, lot of, a very consistent card. Um, let's see, he's going to try and uh, use that on the following turn. And then uh, Tim's going to draw for turn here. So pretty interesting opening uh, couple turns here from both players. Both players kind of like feeling each other out, not much going on. Um, and Tim is going to go ahead and set a face down as well as a face down spell and trap. So, so a T set here from Tim. And we have Max on the right summoning a Bora, looking to get some piercing damage against something like a Raikou, but Tim responds with Bottomless. Interesting Bottomless here if it is a Raikou. And then Dark Bribe over from Max on the right. Uh, very interesting Dark Bribe. I'm not sure. I think he just wants to get this piercing damage um, is his logic. I know he has the Dark Refer in hand, so we're trying to kind of piece together exactly what Max is working with. Maybe he has an Icarus attack that he wants to make sure is alive on the following turn. But uh, let's see what Tim is uh, going to flip over here. If he's thinking about it, it's most likely just a Raikou. That is, uh, he's just thinking about the pop. And there you go. So it ended up being a Raikou. Let's see what he ends up targeting here. Um, he could put a dent into Max's back row. He had three set on turn one, and now he can go down to one. But uh, the piercing damage comes in and Tragodia comes down from Tim's side. So pretty powerful uh, interaction here as the Raikou trades with the Bora, Tim mills three, and a Tragodia comes down. And Tim hasn't really committed much to the board, so he kind of has a full grip here. 
I'm pretty sure he has like five cards in hand, so his Trigodi is looking to be 3,000. Um, as Max adds another back row on the other side. And um, Max doesn't have the Deep Prison, or at least he didn't before. Um, Tim also filling up here with a Pot of Avarice. So, Pot of Avarice, one of the power cards in this Twilight deck, is you can fill your grave really fast, and Avarice can just get you a plus one, get you into your power cards. Um, and the Avarice resolves, so. Chargodia, a pretty big threat here as we know on turn one with the three set, Max didn't have the, um, he didn't have a Torrential, right? Because he would have activated it on the Reaper. He didn't have um, Mirror Force or Deep Prison. So Chargodia is in play now and he's going to um, maybe do some work here. Let's see what Max um, has as his new set. Um, Tim just is going to turn the Chargodia to attack position and I don't blame him. I don't think he should add anything else to the board here he's just gonna attack and see what max has making max have to deal with the Trigodia first is gonna like prove tim's power cards in hand to be a lot more effective and the attack just goes through and i believe it's for three thousand um tim has a full grip i think he dropped to five with the pot of avarice so uh max didn't have an answer and this Trigodia is applying a ton of pressure and max draws another card and and he sets another back row. Maybe that's the answer. Um, he has four back rows in play now. You have to imagine Trigodia is going to be answered at this point, but we know three of them are kind of dead against the Trag because he wouldn't just take the 3,000 plus for little to no reason. Um, and Tim has literally no reason to overcommit. Like, he literally can just keep attacking with the Trigodia. And um, he's just going to force Max to do something with it. And we know the last card in hand for Max is still that Dark Greffer that he hasn't played yet. So... I mean, this Trag is just proving to be extremely powerful and showing the power of Tragodia in this format. Um, you have to be a little bit worried on Tim's side about the four back row, because, you know, if Max does answer the Tragodia, um, he then can maybe, he probably has some other things like um, ways to stop summons, um, something like Bottomless or, you know, Icar a dead Icarus later on. Um, but he actually just picks up the cards. Yeah, Max just concedes to the Tragodia. So, overall, um, it just shows the power of Tragodia in this format as it just comes down and kind of runs away with the game. So, it was a pretty interesting game one. A lot of dirtling around in the early game, and then Tragodia comes down and wins it all. So, interesting here. And uh, on to game two, Max will be on the play, and hopefully he's going to start off with a better opening hand. Uh, and let's see what he has going on in this one. He starts off with Black Rowan, which is one of the great starts in the uh, Black Wing deck, and he summons Ashura. So, pretty awesome start. He's already plus one. Uh, the Black Rowan has replaced itself, and he goes and grabs a Bora. So, grabbing Bora here tells me that he's going to try and be a little bit more aggressive um, towards this Twilight deck and not let the uh, Rikos kind of um, one for one with the opponent. Going to try and push through them and apply pressure. He also has a back row to his mix on the right side. Twilight can have a pretty difficult time dealing with this kind of a setup from the Blackwing deck, especially on turn one, just because, you know, you have Lylas to out things like Black Rowan, but um, you're still like negative tempo and you're just gonna die to the Shura gaining card advantage. Um, also, the Boron hand doesn't make anything better. Um, it's going to be applying a lot of pressure. Tim starts with Charge of Light Brigade, so decent start looking to mill something decent, but uh, no good mills. All spells and traps and brain control, one of the power cards in the Edison format, something that can get out, can help him get out of a position like this. Um, and he does grab the Lila, so interesting choice there. Um, let's see what he has planned for Lila, um, whether it be Solar Recharge to keep digging or just summon it and try and uh, work around this uh, board position here. But this just shows the power of the Blackwing deck. Um, there's various good openings, whether it be Dark Greffer plus Vayu, or Black Whirlwind plus Shura, you know, just gaining card advantage or applying a lot of pressure, and that's exactly what the Blackwing deck wants to be doing on the early turns of the game. Uh, Tim actually Lightning Vortex is here, so a little bit of a minus play. Um, discarding Jane in this spot, and then normal summoning the Lila. So, he uses a lot of cards to get rid of the board, but now he's going to attack directly with Lila. Interesting play, not playing around D-Prison. Um, 
Tim hits him for 17, and then Lila's gonna target the Black Rowan. So he actually dealt with it pretty well. I think it cost him a lot of cards and left him a little vulnerable with the Lila in defense. But maybe he had a read on Icarus attack. Um, and then Tim goes and mills a hamster, a Celestia. Um, maybe he had a read that Max had Icarus attack and um, just wanted to make that dead so that the Lila could go through. And he went intact, so he kind of got it all in that situation, but he did, you know, paid a lot of cards to do so. <laughs> and then we have a funny summon on the right side with normal summon of Vayu. Um, interesting. Um, there was a joke because this week it seemed like Max was summoning Vayu a, a lot <laughs> in this tournament. I played him in this event and he played, uh, he summoned Vayu two times on me. But I mean, Vayu is good in this spot. It's going to attack down the Lila. So um, interesting choice. And to me, this means that he most likely does have Icarus attack. Um, and yeah, I mean, the attack over Lila, pretty sweet. Vayu just like going in, doing work. Um, and leaving Tim with very, very little cards. Um, I think he's drawing to what, two in hand, maybe three? It looks like three, so Tim has four cards, and um, Max is kind of sitting pretty. He has cards up on Tim, and um, let's see what Tim's response to this value is going to be. <laughs> um, he also just probably has Icarus attack in the spot, right? Because he wouldn't just like summon the value just to attack over the Lila. And Tim did like play around Icarus last turn. And he's gonna book a moon here. So this is an interesting play. I mean you're book a mooning a Vayu, right? Um, but I talked to Tim about this because I was watching the game live. And he actually does this to play around Icarus attack because he believes the Max has Icarus in this spot. So he's gonna be able to set his monster um, just to play around Icarus, because he would have Icarus the Book of Moon as well as the set monster. And Tim didn't want to get blown out with such few cards. Um, having access to such few resources so really interesting play if max does have the icarus it's definitely the correct play um it's just one that's really unconventional and just shows like how into it intuitive of a player tim is um playing around a car like icarus because it does look like max has icarus so many times in the spot so um max flips his value and then special summons his bora so now he's looking to apply the pressure he knows tim is uh, kind of on the back foot Tim wasted a book of moon at least it looks like that from his position from Max's position but um uh, it actually runs he runs into a hamster here so hamster's gonna go and set Raiko um, yeah Tim did not want to lose that hamster <laughs> to to the to the uh, Icarus attack as that would have been pretty brutal he wants to make sure it resolves and then like now Max has to waste the Icarus attack if he doesn't want the Raiko to resolve if he has the Icarus attack um, I kind of forget if he actually does, but the idea of Tim's play is really interesting playing around it. Because um, he wants to maximize the value of each and all his cards. So, we do have an Icarus. So, Tim did read right, and he's going to obviously tribute off the value it looks like here, and destroy the hamster as well as the Raiko. Um, but, the you know, the Icarus only actually answered one card, um, but the Book of Moon kind of still ended up getting destroyed as it was, as it was burned. Um, so then Tim draws for turn uh, really interesting sequence on that last few turns by the way with the Book of Moon and all that really interesting play um, Tim starts with Solar Recharge discarding Raikou and then he mills another Raikou and a Caius so this is when the Twilight deck is looking for its big answers you know what's it gonna be able to do on the crackback that's sort of the, what the Twilight deck does it plays one for one in the early game and then just tries to build a big graveyard and do some really cool things like Pot of Avarice, Dark Arm Dragon, Chaos Sorcerer. Um, Tim um, not having uh, JD in his deck, uh, with the deck uh, that worked on together, but he does have a uh, Chaos Sorcerer coming down, and this is exactly what the Twilight deck wants to do. It wants to come down with priority, gonna banish the Bora, and um, yeah, Chaos Sorcerer is just an extremely valuable card, a special summon, didn't use a normal summon yet, just comes down banishes something with priority he's then gonna activate foolish burial so let's see what he sends here um, he could probably send wolf to apply pressure he could send plague spitter zombie to make a synchro potentially um, Max is really um, still has cards in hand so 
Tim is like kind of running on fumes, but he wants to keep this uh, sorcerer in play most likely. But it looks like he's actually going for plague spreader zombie. So um, maybe he's just gonna have access to it, or if he's gonna use it this turn um, to make a level eight synchro, so he can actually attack and um, try to like clock Max. And that's what he's gonna do here. So he's gonna bring back the plague spreader zombie, putting his last card in his hand onto the um, top of the deck, and then. Um, <laughs> Max points out that Tim uh, switched the flipped the plague spitter. The plague spitter gets removed, and not the chaos sorcerer. Um, and then, I mean, I don't mind this play. Um, I think he goes down to just the synchro. Um, but if the synchro sticks, it could like like act as virtual card advantage versus Max's hand. Um, and the Stardust comes down and attacks for twenty five. So. Um, I guess Tim's like game plan here is just like hope that the start Stardust blanks a few of the cards in Max's hand, you know. And I think um, being so low on resources, I don't mind making this type of play, like like putting your t opponent on the clock and making them have an answer when you're behind. You know, adding some variance to the game, saying, "Hey, Max, do you have the answer? Because if you don't, then like I have lower cards than you, but that doesn't matter because my threat is lethal." And um, I think it's just an interesting way to play. Um, when you're down in cards, you're not going to win the long game. So attacking with the Stardust is generally a solid play. Um, but Max is surveying his options here. And um, let's see how he's going to deal with the Stardust. Um, he has a few cards to work with. And he's going to end up summoning Kalut. And it looks like the Kalut is going to declare attack and discard another Kalut. So he ended up having Kalut in hand. Um, two Kaluts actually. And um, bringing the one Kalut up to attack over the Stardust. So he did have an answer, and it only costed one card, which is a really strong answer. So Tim then uh, is going to draw the card that he stacked with Plague on the following turn. So um, we're wondering what he put on the top of the deck at this point. Max is uh, looking at Tim's graveyard and seeing maybe what he wants to set um, behind this Kalut. But... Um, no, he actually ends up summoning Dark Arm Dragon. So, interesting here, he doesn't want his dad to go dead, right? Because if the Kalut somehow dies, the Dark Arm is then dead. Um, I don't think he has a way to banish Monster at his grave. So, I like establishing the Dark Arm here and just, you know, forcing Tim to do something. And yeah, Tim just draws for turn and ends. So, um, the dad just coming down and, um, you know, it beats any set cards. Um, but Max is going to attack with both of his monsters. The Kalut, then the Dark Arm Dragon, and then set a back row. So, um, this is pretty grim for the Twilight deck here. There's not many cards that can actually come back and win. Um, but Tim has Heavy Storm, so let's see what uh, the response here from Max. And there's a Dark Bribe, so Tim gets a plus one there, maybe drawing into something good. But, um, Dark Bribe protecting another interactive trap, so <clears throat> might not be a good look. Tim sets a back row, probably hoping that um, Max forgets to pop with Dad. Um, let's see what he has here in response to the activation. And it's Dust Tornado, so he actually gets another uh, one for one there, but um, still behind on board, he's not going to be able to deal with the pressure that um, Max is putting on here. And Max is sort of thinking about his play, not ex sure exactly how to, um, what to do. You know, obviously he's going to be attacking, but um, what after? I think is what he's thinking about. And he attacks with the dark arm first. I forget why he does this. <laughs> Tim like kind of bluffs the gores <laughs> that he didn't play around, um, and then that's the game. So, <laughs> um, dark arm coming down. Um, not really the traditional dad pop multiple cards, but uh. Dark Arm just coming down and providing a faster clock. You know, if Kalut was just attacking itself, it might have gave Tim uh, a few more turns. But uh, now we're tied up at one, so pretty interesting matchup. Um, a few things going on on both sides in that game, and then uh, you know, Kalut to Kalut answering the Stardust in the late game was proved to be pretty strong. So uh, Tim's gonna get the play in game three. He's earned that right, and let's see what he has. Let's see what he has going on here on the left side. Twilight looking to get off to a good start, maybe set a hamster on turn one, 
said a Raikou, just getting the engine going, trying to interact with the opponent. We haven't seen a Caius come down yet, or a Celestia, which is kind of the marquee cards of this Twilight deck. And looks like Tim does have a set on turn one, which is pretty good. You know, you want to be able to remove all the threats from the, the Blackwing side, get them down to low uh, resources. And let's see how Max is going to open up here versus this set monster. He normal summoned Sirocco, so pretty good start. And then he's special summoning Bora, so really good start here, right? He's going to be as aggressive as po possible, and he's actually pumping the Bora here. So he's going to try and pierce for a bunch of damage, pumping the Bora up to 37. And then he runs into a Jujutsu Master. Um, Tim and I like this card a lot in the Twilight deck. Um, and he bounces the Bora, but he does take some piercing damage there. Um, we liked the card because it kind of just mixes up your um, answers with your opponents, you know, what they expect with um, the Raikos and Hamsters. You also add in Jujutsu Master to the mix. And um, it just removes threats in a wide variety of different ways. And you're setting a monsters a lot anyway. Um, so, but this is honestly a great start for Max. I mean, coming down with Soro, he summoning two monsters ensured the fact that he was going to have a monster in play on um, at the end of his turn. So Tim has to deal with the Soroko now and um, two back rows as well. So let's see what the Twilight deck can do to um, kind of break through this 2K beat stick. Um, Tim probably looking to chain together some draw spells here. Um, but he actually activates brand control. So paying 800, targeting the Sirocco, and he takes it. And then he's going to activate Foolish Burial, it looks like. So, and he sends the wolf. So now Tim looking to be a little bit aggressive on his end here. Um, I like it. I like brand control of Foolish Burial Wolf. I mean, he's just going to put 4k into play. Um, but unfortunately, Tim, um, Max responds to the wolf effect with royal oppression so that's going to prevent the wolf from coming out and um tim um most likely has some way to get rid of the sirocco whether it be sacking for caius or synchroing in some way but if he's planning on synchroing that's going to get negated by the royal oppression so um let's see what tim do tim does if he's going to attack first for the 2000 or um whatnot so he's actually going to tribute summon for celestia so he was looking to sack the wolf there um, to get um, massive advantage, but Celestia comes down with no effect and attacks for 23. So um, he does get rid of the Sirocco and uh, establishes his own 2300 beat stick. And um, now Max is under royal oppression and has to deal with the Celestia. But um, the Blackwing deck doesn't special summon too often. He's most likely going to try and get a Vayu uh, into the graveyard. And then uh, be able to activate it since Oppression can't negate that. Tim just kind of thinking about what he wants to set here. And um, I would definitely want to be setting at least something behind the 2300 stick. And he sets one. So um, Celestia looks like it's going to just be a little bit of pressure. Um, from Tim's side, and Max is going to have to deal with that pressure. Um, Royal Oppression, pretty solid in this matchup for hitting like one or two things, just like key moment type cards. Um, um, and we actually have a Lightning Vortex here from Max, discarding the Bora and destroying the Celestia. So Max is going to be able to deal with the board and then summon a Shura to apply some pressure. And, uh, he attacked with the Shura into a D prison. And then Max protects his uh, Shura with Dark Bribe onto the D prison. He's been very aggressive with the Dark Bribes, and I really don't mind it. I think the card is very strong, and um, I think just stopping uh, key moments, whatever they may be, can be very powerful in this format. And um, so the attack goes through for 18, and then Tim draws. Um, so. Let's see what Tim is going to have here. Oppression and an 18 stick can be hard to beat, but here comes Jane, a card that Tim and I like were thinking about playing in this deck for a while, and it comes down and proves to be good in the spot, just going up to 21 and attacking onto Shura. And then Max is going to set a face-down monster. 
So Jane proved to be excellent in that spot, just answering the threat of Shura and then forcing the um, black one player, Max, on the right here to set a monster and be on the defensive. So um, Jane's just a great card. Um, it's just attacking. It's a beat stick. It beats over things. And um, But now here comes Caius and the follow-up from Tim here. So Caius is going to come down in the late stages of the game and banish a Vayu. So excellent, excellent Caius. Just proving to be one of the best cards in Edison once again. And uh, hitting for a 1,000 because it's a dark monster for the burn damage and then attacking for 24 and then that's the game so max ends up conceding uh kai is coming down and closing out the game for tim and that's about it guys so thanks for sticking around and watching this finals match from our local twilight taking the tournament down at 4-0 from tim from ssg on the left and without further ado this is dan from ssg signing out